My name is Nassim Sabs. Let me ask you a question. Has anything ever happened to you that you couldn't explain? That made you feel sort of foolish when you tried to tell somebody about it? Well, if it has, you have plenty of company, as you'll soon see. Thomas McDonald was born on September 21st, 1988 in a very small town in British Columbia known as Mission, which is about a two hour drive outside of Vancouver. There, Tom spent the first 13 years of his life attending a school known as Albert McMahon Elementary. Then when he was a teenager, his family, they packed up and they moved to Edmonton, Alberta. Now, I've actually been there and some refer to it as Edmonton, which in the dead of winter, well, it's a pretty fitting name. Then we would live here for the next six years and he attended a ton of schools, including York Elementary, Steel Heights Junior High, JJ Bolin Junior High, and St. Joseph's High School. Now when he was still just a kid, well his dad, he worked a number of odd jobs in scrap yards, lumber mills, and recycling plants. Then we even once traveled as far as Alaska to help out with a demolition job. Now basically Pops, he did whatever he could to help take care of his family. Now Tom's dad, he did it eventually, settling into a role helping with contract negotiations for a company in Fort McMurray. Now for those of you who don't know this place, it's like Canada's Abu Dhabi or Dubai. It just ain't fancy. It's just all construction workers up there, for real. And like one Tim Hortons. On the other side of the coin, well, Tom's mom, she worked as a teller before eventually becoming the manager of their local branch of Bank of Montreal. Now, if you're expecting to hear that Tom's relationship with his parents was a rough one and they just didn't understand their son or his passions, well, that isn't this story. Now, in fact, Tom, he tells us that his parents, they always pushed them to follow his dreams no matter what they were. Now, regardless of what Tom was going through in his life, they always believed in him. Through all the failed classes, the lost jobs, and self-destruction via alcoholism, well, his parents, they always had faith in their son. My dad took the poem that I wrote, that I got the low score on, and he gave it to a, a multi-time published Canadian author uh, who, is, who is a poet. And she read it, and she said, you know, Jamie, um, Thomas wrote something far beyond his years in this poem. In fact, he vividly recalls his parents sitting him down and telling him that they would support him whatever his ambitions were, even if he just wanted to move to Florida and build sandcastles for a living. They were confident that those would be the best sandcastles ever made. Now, Tom also grew up with his sister as well, and he's even more proud of her than she is of him and his success, especially considering recent world events. Now, Tom's sister, she works as a registered nurse and is right now on the front lines working in operating rooms to help with the pandemic in Canada's COVID units. So yeah, like a huge shout out to her and all the amazing work she's doing right now. Now, with all that support in his corner, well, Tom, he had to decide what he wanted to do with his life. Now, at first, he wanted to become a professional wrestler because as a teenager, well, he was a huge fan of Stone Cold Steve Austin and he was willing to do whatever it took to be just like his idol. Honestly, I'm just so tired. I just want to go. If you're excited to drop your brand new video, Give me a hell yeah, Tom. Hell yeah, Steve. Hell yeah. So when he was just 14 years old, well, Tom, he began training for his future in the wrestling ring. Within six months, he was having his very first wrestling match. A year later, he was on a bi-weekly wrestling television show in Canada called Canadian Wrestling Legends. There's a flag with a lady in a red shirt and a white and a rascal as she gets tipped over there. Spit oh! oh! They get spotted in the match. Oh yeah, here we go. And let's draw a heat. Now, because Tom was wrestling while still in high school, he was placed in a unique educational system known as ISDL, or Independent Self-Directed Learning. What that meant is that he attended classes and seminars on certain subjects, then did the schoolwork and tests in his own time. Now, this allowed Tom to finish his education system while spending like three quarters of his day in the gym, lifting weights and preparing for his upcoming matches. After graduating from high school, well, Tom, he would go on to work as a professional wrestler for a handful of years. Now, all in all, he worked the wrestling circuit for six years, including promotions like Prairie Wrestling Alliance and Monster Pro Wrestling. Now, anyone who's ever tried to make a living in that industry knows how difficult it can be. It's a lot of hard work for very little pay until you make it big. So Tom, well, he had to supplement his income by working construction jobs. 
Now he primarily worked as a carpenter, building a lot of houses and businesses in both the residential and the commercial sectors. Then we'd also head up north and work in logging camps and oil rigs to make some more extra money on the side. But through all the wrestling, the carpentry, and the physical labor, well, Tom, he was harboring a secret passion, a desire to rap. Now, Tom had always wanted to do something that affected people on a real level, which is why being a musician has always been intriguing to him. Ever since his dad first took him to a pawn shop, gave him five bucks, and Tom, he bought himself two pucks, all eyes on me. And the kid, well, he's been hooked ever since. Now, Tom had never heard of Tupac before, and this album had changed his life. He fell in love with it and hip hop in general. But as a white kid from the Canadian suburbs, well, Tom knew there was a huge disconnect between himself and the music he loved. So from there, he began writing poetry as a way to bridge the gap. Now, eventually, those poems, they turn into rock songs, and Tom, he worked for a long time on refining the sound for himself before determining that he simply didn't have the voice of a rock star. Then one day in school, a friend, he told him all about this record that he had stolen from his older brother. It was an album from a white rapper named Eminem. Tom gave the record a listen and his mind was blown. Almost instantly, that disconnect he felt between himself and hip hop, it disintegrated altogether. Now Tom knew from that point forward that he could accomplish his dreams. I hate to say it, but Eminem came out yep. with uh, with a real Slim Shady Please Stand mm -hmm. Up. Yep. And I just remember seeing the video and, and I was like, yo, this guy looks like me. This guy's got, you know, just a white boy. He's got blonde hair, he's got blue eyes, and he's dope. So Tom, he started writing raps in secret. Now he even started writing them while he was still a professional wrestler. Now by the time his pro wrestling career had ended, well he knew what his next move was gonna be. He bought professional software and recording equipment and he started making his own beats. It's kind of like a, a weird thing actually. I was like a professional wrestler, like the yeah. WWF stuff, um, before the music came along. And then um, just due to a lot of different circumstances, I sort of got out of the wrestling thing and um, I just had all this, you know, pent up creativity. I've just always been that kid. Right. And uh, I always just really just loved music. Before long, he was working with a producer known as OV and dropping his first album, Lee and Son. Around this time, he moved back to Vancouver on his own and started collaborating with a rapper named Matt Brevner, dropping his first music video, Dark Side of the Moon. Now, at first, he thought he had to write songs about money, girls, and cars because that's what popular rappers do. Now this only led to inner turmoil that was further fueled by things like drinking weed and partying. Also that other stupid shit that tends to get in the way. Now things got so bad there were days when he couldn't even manage to eat something as simple as an egg or a piece of toast. Not to mention the sleepless nights which had him turning into a shell of his former self. In fact, Tom, he had something of a mental breakdown not too far along into his musical career. Now this event, it radically changed his life after spending a year in a really bad place, not making any music while he realized that he wasn't being authentic to himself. I used to love to be in public, now I'd rather be alone. And even though it's difficult, it's probably for the best. If I didn't make a change, I would have drank myself to death. Thus, he gave up his vices and he turned his gaze inward to figure things out. With the help of people like his good friend Brendan Hart and the woman who would one day become his partner in crime and his best friend in the world, Nova Rockefeller. We'll have more on her in just a second. Now eventually Tom, well he made it out to the other side, not only that, will he learn what was important to him and that he had things he wanted to say in his music. It was then in 2017 that he was experiencing his first real science of success with his track, Dear Rappers. Nova would go on to shoot and edit all of Tom's music videos over the years and her wealth of knowledge pertaining to the industry, well, it's kept him on the right path navigating the business side of things. Now she's the teammate that Tom never knew he needed, but she would wind up saving his life. After 13 years of friendship, well, they graduated to something more, and the pair, well, they've been together as a couple for over four years now. In terms of his process, well, Tom works as hard as he possibly can, putting in 20-hour days consistently. He figures if he can out to himself each and every day, he'll eventually get to a place he wants to be in his life. And with hit tracks like Coronavirus and Best Rapper Ever, well, I'd say that Tom, he's closer than ever to accomplishing his dreams. Now, there was a while there where Tom, he had to fight for his life every single day for nine months straight, where the minutes, they felt like days, and the days felt like eternity. Now, not only did he survive that ordeal, but he overcame his vices. And Tom, he wants anyone who listens to his music to know that they could do it too. As cliche as it may sound, tough. Replicated. Replicated.